All right, welcome to another video and it's time to review Pixel Experience Unofficial based on Android 13 for the Mi 11X, also known as Poco F3. Now, this is not officially out for this device yet, so I figured let's give the unofficial version a try because Pixel Experience is among the most uh, favorite ROMs for many people. And sooner we will be comparing the actual Pixel device with a Pixel Experience, so stay tuned for that video. For now, let's get with the review and let's see what all this has to offer. But before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now, without further ado, hello awesome people, welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Now, as you can see over here, it says Pixel Experience Unofficial Android 13 updated on the 17th of September 2022. I have been using it for the last two to three days. So we do have a few battery backup numbers, charging cycle numbers, and you know, I've tried almost everything. So I can tell you, you should try it for daily or not. Now, if you talk about the change log, there's not much mentioned over here, which we did check in the install video as well, right? Now there is a flashing guide that is mentioned over here and you can follow our video in which you know we shared how to flash this rom step by step now clean flash only if coming from other rom if updating dirty flash allowed but clear cache if twrp fails try from pe recovery recommended firmware is the eea firmware that's everything that is mentioned over here including that this is a ero fs rom now android 13 being android 13 this rom is absolutely smooth fluid and it works great for the most part. The reason I say the most part is because this, of course, this is an unofficial beta and there will be bugs here and there and that's what we're gonna talk about first. So as you can see, the moment you boot into the ROM, you have a very, very familiar AOSP style look. I've placed this widget over here, including the wallpaper that is included in the ROM. And for the most part, these themed icons work absolutely fine. What I don't get is even on the Pixel, there are a lot of apps that I'm missing themed icon packs and I really think Google should step up and give us as many themed icons as possible because then that will complete the look. Right now it looks a little incomplete, you know, leading games, YouTube's own app, YouTube Studio, all these things are not themed. So that is something they need to work on. Now at the bottom you of course have the Google search bar with the lens shortcut over here, which works absolutely fine. You do have a smooth multitasking using the bottom gesture bar, that works okay as well. Even if you go to the multitasking menu, everything works fine. There is this Android 13 feature which, you know, opens images or copies images directly. Let me show you that. So let's actually search for a Pixel 6 here. And let's go to say images real quick. Okay, and let's open this image. Let's go to the main screen and bam. So yes, this is an Android 13 feature. It is present and it's working absolutely fine. So that's good to see. You can directly, you know, save the image and the way it is saved is absolutely beautiful. Now, there are a couple of force closes that I have been getting for different options. This is the first time I saw a camera force close, but we will talk about that. So the multitasking is good. The multitasking menu is pretty good as well. You do have a split screen multitasking, which works absolutely fine. So no problem there. And in split screen multitasking, as you just saw, you do have these curved edges now, which I think looks a little different, but I think it might be a custom ROM thing. Anyways, now moving on, you have these icons. You have this Google dialer over here. So if you try to make a call, calling feature works absolutely fine. Once again, adaptive connectivity services keeps. Okay, so. Uh, all right. So the Google dialer is present. Google messaging is present with call recording. Now, if we talk about the camera application, you have a very basic camera app. Even if you try, say, a Gcam or something, sometimes it doesn't work. So you have to pr try the proper Gcam port. Now, understand this is Android 13 and a lot of things will get fixed sooner rather than later. Now, the app drawer is pretty smooth and rock solid. There are not many applications, so no bloatware at all. If you talk about the quick tiles over here, you have almost everything that you would need, including a screen recorder, which allows you to record internal and external audio. And the Android 13 feature of show touches on screen is now present. Now, you do have things like sound amplifier. So I think that's 
there and that works okay if you go to the edit menu you will see that you do have a few extra tiles over here nothing out of the ordinary very very close to what android 12 used to offer over here you do have you know both the sim cards details and sim calling or you know connectivity on mobile data or wi-fi is working absolutely okay so i've not had any problem and as i said you know because this is android 13 rom overall the smoothness is just next level right now let's quickly dive into settings over here let's go to say about phone and let's go to the android version 13 now if you keep tapping on it you will get this wonderful easter egg which can give you a lot of different views as you can see you just have to long press on it and that makes for a great thumbnail doesn't it anyways yeah so the easter egg is of course present and the other details are no kernel is present you do get the september security patch and this is the latest build that we are talking about now pixel experience being pixel experience you don't really get a ton of customization options but all the android 13 features are present you don't see the game space option present over here in fact it's not there on my pixel 6 as well so that's weird but you do get thermal profiles so that definitely is there right and as you can see i have set the thermal profile to different options for gaming for benchmarks and stuff and i think it makes some difference it doesn't really make a hell lot of difference and if you talk about wallpaper in style you know monet is present with many more options now as you can see 12 options versus 4 what you used to get earlier dark theme is what i have disabled and if you go to change wallpaper the good thing is you get a complete list of all the wallpapers that you get with android 13 on pixel 6 so that is a good thing and monitor is working fine it is much more deep into the system now and it works great now as far as password and security is concerned you do get a fingerprint scanner you don't really get face unlock over here right as you can see more security settings so you don't really have face unlock available if you go to system you do have languages and input live translate which works fine you do have gestures quick tap to start action so quick tap on the back is working okay and system navigation does have some options so all these features were present in android 12 and they are present in android 13 based pixel experience as well and i'm happy to report for the most part you can use this as a daily driver now the reason i say this is because whenever you install a custom rom security is the most important so play store certification is present widevine l1 certification is present safety net does pass so the most important things are definitely taken care of over here but the camera experience on this rom is not that great unless you get a proper g cam which should work absolutely fine next up social media applications i did not have any issues with any of the social media applications so they were working absolutely fine including camera access and stuff like that notifications of whatsapp telegram are working absolutely okay so no major bugs there and apart from this as you can see i've tried a couple of games and benchmarks so we will talk about them but first let's look at the battery situation on this rom now that is something that got me a little worried i'll tell you why the first charge 100 to 11 percent if you have a look uh it took 19 hours and 23 minutes but out of this I noticed that 55% of the battery was taken by the ambient display. Now that's a little surprising considering this device does come with an AMOLED panel and it shouldn't really be happening. So I thought let the ROM settle. Now when I charged it again, it took two hours to go from 11 to 100%. That is half an hour more and I did use the original 33 watt charger. Once again in around 24 hours we went all the way down to 9% just with 1 hour and 28 minutes of screen on time and then the charging speeds were pretty decent and the battery backup is also pretty decent i'm still getting around four hours of screen on time so i would not say that this is perfect coming from a beta but it's pretty decent it can be improved further and as the kernel keeps getting updated things will get better now let's talk about the benchmark numbers because that is what a lot of people care about now i know this doesn't relate or translate to real world performance but it does give us some indication at least now the temperature did increase by 6.3 degrees celsius which is not normal it is around 1.3 degrees more than what the 870 normally does in android 2 benchmark the battery did drop by 3 percent and we got a splendid score of 700,011, which is pretty good now if you further go to google photos where we will have a look at you know the screenshots 
All right. Now, as you can see, the CPU throttled to 87% of its max performance and the average score was 220, 934 GIPS and the maximum score was 239, 107 GIPS. So pretty solid result over here. If you then go to Geekbench, well, let's see what Geekbench has to offer as far as performance is concerned. 912 and 2753. So this is low across the board. Remember on the stock ROM or most Android 12.1, Stable custom ROMs, you can get around 1000 over here and 3000 to 3300. So performance, battery life, these are the things that definitely needs to be worked on. Apart from this, if you actually have a look at Google Photos, let's see. You do have unlimited storage. It's funny that my Pixel has stopped having unlimited storage, but the Mi 11X with a custom ROM is still having unlimited storage. Now other basic things like video playback on YouTube including 4K video playback is working fine. Amazon Prime and Netflix is working fine. My payments applications are working okay. And I did try to play Apex Legends for a couple of hours and I was mighty surprised. Now although this is an early Android 13 build, apart from a few stutters or jitters in intense you know, situations, I did not really have a problem playing Apex Legends. Now for Android 13 ROMs, be it, you know, the Mi 11X, the Poco X3 Pro or the Redmi Note 10 Pro, for now, it doesn't make sense to do a gaming review. Very soon, I will start doing them. But all in all, this unofficial version of Pixel Experience still has some work to do. But if you really want to try it, you can definitely try it. Apart from a few force closures, you will not have any major problems. The ROM is definitely reliable, but stay near a charging port because the battery life is not that great. Now, the same video will be available in Hindi on PhoneOps Hindi. Let me know in the comments section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kailash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.